This is Pastor Todd here, and I just wanted to start off this sermon with a video clip which we tried to show on Sunday, uh, but alas, we had uh, uh, technical issues. Um, but I believe that this clip will add a lot of context and power to the message and hopefully drive the point home. Uh, also, there will be a link uh, to take you to where you can buy this movie or rent it to watch. Um, and if you have subscribed to uh, Right Now Media through our church, uh, this movie is is on there and free for you to watch. If not, and you would like to join uh, Right Now Media, uh, just contact us at the church and we will be glad to sign you up. Uh, in the meantime, may God bless you as you listen to this message. Let's not delude ourselves that if we take the loyalty oath to Hitler, it means they let us worship in peace. The Nuremberg Laws are an attack on Christianity itself. Adolf Hitler demands nothing less than total commitment He's the elected chancellor, yes. But more than that, he considers himself der Führer. And as the leader, he craves to be the conscience of every living German. But his claim upon us is a claim that a Christian can only accept from Christ himself. The Reichsbishop is rewriting Holy Scripture. Only those who cry out for the Jews have the right to sing Gregorian chants. Thank you, Dietrich. Christ himself was a Jew. And in the eyes of the Lord, we are all one. Ivant, take Charlotte out. Come on. Dr. Bonhoeffer? Yes? Good evening. Good evening. Until further notice, you're forbidden to speak in public, to publish your writings, and to teach. And you're to report to the Gestapo once a week. Is that clear? Good evening. Be careful. Gentlemen, it's my duty to arrest you if you refuse to take the oath. So let us please recite it together. I swear to be true and obedient. I swear to be true and obedient. The Führer of the German Reich, Adolf Hitler. To the Führer of the German Reich, Adolf Hitler. To abide by the law and fulfill my duty. To So help me God. So help me from? Heaven on earth? 
First, let me state, in case you did not pick it up, this clip came from the movie Bonhoeffer, Agent of Grace, which is a biopic on the life and ministry of the Reverend Dr. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a Lutheran pastor and pacifist in Germany, who eventually joined a plot to assassinate Hitler. You heard me right. A pacifist pastor in Germany joined a plot to assassinate Hitler. This is a complex world we live in, folks. And sometimes our high ideals don't meet up with reality, and that's where Bonhoeffer found himself. He realized he could, he could ignore what was going on around him, do nothing about it like so many other people did, and become a part and complacent in the evil happening around him, or he could commit a single act of evil to avert all of the other evil that was being done. Now, good news is, if you have not seen this film, you can watch it for free on Right Now Media if you have opted to sign up for that. It, it is there in full and you can watch it. Uh, but it highlights Bonhoeffer's efforts of resistance against Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich. Prior to joining an assassination plot, Dietrich, along with other clergy, formed what was called the Confessing Church. A church in es that, in essence, worshipped underground and refused to pledge any oath of allegiance to Hitler or his regime. Dangerous, tricky stuff to do in Nazi Germany. The scene we watched was actually one of those the, the Confessing Church's meetings. That's why it was dark. It was at night inside where nobody knew they were meeting. How many of us go to church at night except on Christmas Eve? Right? We don't typically. We go in the morning. We worship when it's daylight. They're worshiping at night in the still of night so no one knows they're there. But... That was an epic fail because the Gestapo knew they were there. And they wanted to silence any leader, pastor or otherwise, from spreading the true gospel of Jesus Christ, who either swore allegiance to Hitler, or you were not allowed to speak on penalty of death. And this is what Hitler did. Hitler, actually, what he was trying to do was he wanted to unify all of the Protestant churches together as a pro-Nazi, Protestant Reich church. And Bonhoeffer was having none of that. Hitler and the Gestapo wanted to silence any leader from spreading the true gospel of Jesus Christ, which teaches us that salvation comes through Christ alone. And that kind of faith demands of Christians to put their loyalty in Christ and no one and nothing else. The Christian message stood opposed to the political and social norms of Hitler's Germany. And if truth be told, the Christian message often stands opposed to politics and society in our time and place as well. I mean, it is easy for us to point the finger back to Hitler and go, of course the, the Christian message is opposed to that. Of course. But can we, can we rightfully say that we in America are always lining up with the Christian message? This should not be a surprise to us. Yet for some of us, I know it is. This should not be a surprise. In today's readings, we have two examples that show how politics and society stand in contrast, stand opposed to politics and society. And how, I mean, how politics and society stand in contrast and opposed to God. First, let's look at Joseph, okay? We read this story because we've, we've read the, the, the Tiffany story time and time again, year after year, have we not? And, and so it just becomes a part of our thing to do at this time of year. But have we truly read the story about Joseph? Rather than read 
reading over it. Joseph uh, is, is in a room, let's just imagine he's in a room, and Mary walks in, and uh, my, Mary, you look like you've gained a little weight, right? Which is something you don't say, by the way. Any guys out there, do not say that, right? It gets you in trouble instantly. But, but Joseph, said, you know, he looks at that. She's visibly pregnant. Now, Joseph knows, I didn't do anything with Mary for her to be pregnant. That wasn't me. Oh, and she's claiming that this baby was a product of the Holy Spirit rather than another guy. Now, we have hindsight, and we look at this story and go, oh, but it was. It was the product of the Holy Spirit. How awesome. But you have to put your shoes in, you have to put your feet in Joseph's shoes here for a minute. Imagine your soon-to-be bride, if you're a guy, imagine your soon-to-be bride comes in and tells you that the Holy Spirit impregnated her, and it was no guy that did it. Just, just wrap your head around that. Which one of us would be like, oh, of course. The Holy Spirit does that all the time. We'd have a hard time believing it, as Joseph does. And so Joseph was going to quietly, quietly, he was going to break the engagement. Why quietly? Because he didn't want to publicly shame her or her family. And by the way, by shame, that means she probably would be stoned to death if he were to call her out and say, she cheated, that's not my kid. So he was going to quietly call off the engagement to, to not draw attention to the situation, though it's hard to not draw attention to that situation, because he was a righteous person. And by righteous means he wanted to do what was right. He wanted to be just in his actions toward Mary. But he was definitely going to break off the engagement. Why, do you think? Why would he want to break off the engagement? He didn't believe it was the Holy Spirit. That's certainly a part of why he did not want to get married to Mary. Anybody else? Why did he, want, why did he plan to break off the engagement? What happens if Joseph says, Okay, Mary, I believe you. I take your story for, for what, what it is. I don't know if he'd get killed, but he would be bringing the shame of that act of getting intimate with somebody before marriage upon his own head. He would be lying, for one, it wasn't his child, and two, he would be taking the shame of Mary upon his own head and claiming that baby to be his. Which would not only humiliate him and shame him, but it would shame his entire family and disappoint his entire family as well. You see how society works. And then there's Herod, who was not willing to share his power or authority with any other person. In fact, he had a hard enough time sharing his household with his wife and kids. He had his wife murdered and his uh, son, one, one or two of his sons murdered because he believed they were plotting against him. That's how good of a guy this guy was, right? <coughs> he was not willing to share his power with anyone, let alone a working class child. So Herod opts to kill every child two years old and under in order to ensure that no one else but him and his sons, the ones that remained, had claim to the throne. Politics. Sisters and brothers. In the social and political world of first century Judea, there was no room for baby Jesus. There was no room for Jesus at all. There was no room in Nazareth for a prematurely pregnant mother or her scandalous fatherless child any more than there was room in Herod's palace. Brothers and sisters, in politics and society, even today, there is no room at any inn for the Christ who commands our faithfulness 
and loyalty to him and no one else. Now, I know we all talk about making room for Jesus in our end, right? We, we put a little spot. We, we have the upper level of our heart, right? We put Jesus on the right-hand side of the upper level of the heart, and then in the middle, we put family, and on the left side, we put the country, and then somewhere down in the living room area, we put our entertainment center, our movies, our golf, and everything else we love to do, right? We make a little spot for Jesus, but Jesus doesn't call us to make a little spot for Jesus. Jesus calls us to give him our whole heart. Amen? Like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, though our times and challenges are somewhat different, not entirely different, but somewhat different, We are being given a choice of allegiance. Will we choose to pledge our allegiance to our political leaders and their worldviews, and to our society and its norms? Or will we, like Bonhoeffer, cut down the flag, so to speak, and follow no one and nothing else? but our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, at all costs. Now, how many of you are familiar with Dietrich Bonhoeffer? How many of you know who he is? He was, again, a Lutheran pastor in Germany. And because he decided to resist Hitler and join an assassination plot, he got found out. And he got imprisoned at Flossenburg camp in uh, Flossenburg concentration camp. And two weeks before the Allies came in and liberated that camp, he was hung naked in the court to die. Two weeks. Because they were killing off all political prisoners before they couldn't. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stood up for Christ at all costs. Followed Christ at all costs. As we approach Christ's arrival, let us dedicate our hearts solely to him who died and rose again and is Lord of all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for challenging us this morning, reminding us that this Advent thing is serious. That we are called to give everything we have and all that we are to you and what you are doing in this world. And there can be no room for anything else. Lord, help us to be a people who give our hearts over to you. So that there is no choice to be made. Where you go, we follow. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.